Good morning to you from the Great Plains of Moscow, Idaho. We are the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, the Reformed Pentecostal Anglo-Saxon and Royal Empire of the Kingdom of God denomination. Our Sunday worship service is 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study is 7 p.m. I am the Right Reverend Archduke Dr. Robert L. Maxwell of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry House of Honzel and Duke of Pomerania and Livonia. Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomerania and Livonia. Field Marshal of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry and of the House of Hanzolan, Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry. And today I will be doing a message called The Beatitudes of the Empire of the Kingdom of God Denomination. Well, so, uh, let's pray. Dear Yahweh Ottoman, we come before you and uh, ask you to bless this message, to anoint this message, grant us wisdom and knowledge concerning the subject that we're going to be looking at. Fill us up with the Holy Ghost. Let my preaching and teaching be acceptable to you. Let this be a word that someone needs to hear. Let it bless, edify, and transform us and make us more and more like you, Christ Jesus. We pray and ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost, amen. So, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 16, and we're going to be looking at Luke. Chapter five, or Luke chapter six, verse seventeen through forty-five today. So, without further ado, let us take a look at those chapters and verses that we'll be looking at. If you will, open up your Bibles, get out your notebooks, and take notes, and follow along, if you will. Matthew 5, 1 to 16, one day, as the crowds were gathering, Jesus went up the mountain and sat down to teach them. This is what he taught them. Thus is those who realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is given to them. 
4. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 5. God blesses those who are gentle and lowly, for the whole earth will belong to them. 6. God blesses those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, for they will receive a temple. 7. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. 8. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. 9. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. 10. God blesses those who are persecuted, because they are for God, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. 11. God blesses you when you are mocked and persecuted and lied about because you are my followers. 12. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted, too. 13. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it useful again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. 14. You are the light of the world, like a city on a mountain, glowing in the night for all to see. 15. Don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. 16. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Luke 6, 1745. When they came down the slopes of the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large, level area, surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the seacoasts of Tyre and Sidon. 18. They had come to hear him and to be healed, and Jesus cast out many evil spirits. 19. Everyone was trying to touch him, because healing power went out from him, and they were all cured. 20. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor for the kingdom of God is given to you. 21. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for the time will come when you will laugh with joy. 22. God blesses you who are hated and excluded and mocked and cursed, because you are identified with me, the Son of Man. 23. When that happens, rejoice. Yes. Leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were also treated that way by your ancestors. 24. What sorrows await you who are rich? For you have your only happiness now. 25. What sorrows await you who are satisfied and prosperous now? For a time of awful hunger is before you. What sorrows await you who laugh carelessly? for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. 26. What sorrows await you who are praised by the crowds? For their ancestors also praised false prophets. 27. But if you are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. 28. Pray for the happiness of those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. 29. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. 30. Give what you have to anyone who asks you for it, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. 31. Do for others as you would like them to do for you. 32. Do you think you deserve credit merely for loving those who love you? Even the sinners do that. 33. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, is that so wonderful? Even sinners do that much. 34. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, what good is that? Even sinners will lend to their own kind for a full return. 35. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them. And don't be concerned that they might not repay then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and to those who are wicked. 36. You must be compassionate, just as your Father is compassionate. 37. Stop judging others, and you will not be judged. Stop criticizing others, or it will all come back on you. If you forgive others, you will be forgiven. 38. If you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, 
and running over. Whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. 39. Then Jesus gave the following illustration. What good is it for one blind person to lead another? The first one will fall into a ditch and pull the other down also. 40. A student is not greater than the teacher, but the student who works hard will become like the teacher. 41. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? 42. How can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log from your own eye, then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. 43. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. 44. A tree is identified by the kind of fruit it produces. Figs never grow on thorn bushes or grapes on bramble bushes. 45. A good person produces good deeds from a good heart, and an evil person produces evil deeds from an evil heart. Whatever is in your heart determines what you say. So, Matthew written to the house of Judah, the Jews, as well as the Gentiles, Matthew emphasizing Christ the Messiah, the King. Luke being a doctor, emphasis on the humiliation of Christ. Of Christ. And uh, we use the New Living. So if you will, turn on over to Luke chapter 5, verse 1, this is a contemporary English. So Luke, or Matthew 1, So we have, as some like to call the Beatitudes, one of the most quoted verses, or even chapters, liberals like to use it. But, the liberals, as always, and those liberal churches always misinterpret the Beatitudes. So, Jesus went up on the mountainside and a crowd of people followed him and his disciples as well were there and Jesus Christ taught for several days and I'm pretty sure we probably got an excerpt of what was talked about those days he taught this Jesus Christ was writing to 
or I should say Jesus was speaking to the house of Judah, the Jews. Pharisees and Sadducees were there, and the disciples who later after teaching the Beatitudes walks down a hillside ordains and elects his disciples to be his and apostles and he gives them a brief excerpt of the Beatitudes So Jesus Christ writing to the elect Jews probably Gentiles too the elect Gentiles the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Kenites He's writing to his elect and very elect, like the apostles who were chosen to be God's very elect. And much, much more could be said on that subject. Verse 1, when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on the side of the mountain and sat down. Jesus' disciples gathered around him and he taught them. God, bless those, God blesses those people who depend only on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. So as we see, in verse 1, a mountain. He went up on the side of the mountain so and sat down. So there's probably a slant. The hill was probably maybe a slanted hill a little bit. And he sat there. And a crowd followed him. Who are those crowds? Uh, well, a crowd can only be a mixture of God's elect and non-elect. And God's very elect and non-elect. Maybe those Maybe that crowd, maybe the people that sat down at that crowd were future preachers or teachers or even prophets. And obviously the elect of the house of Judah, the Jews, uh, the elect of the Jews, and the elect of the very, uh, or the uh, very elect of the Jews, ah, uh, possibly the lost house of Israel, descendants of. 
the house of Israel may be there. Gentiles, obviously, and for one thing is for sure, the Kenites are there who mix with the house of Judah, who mix in the leadership, who later took over the leadership. And we read about that. Revelation tells us a little about well, and of course Jesus Christ teaches it as well. Revelation, the Apostle John. Philadelphia and Smyrnoff we read it by. Let's start in verse 8 of Revelation chapter 2. This is what you must write to those angels of the church in Smyrna. Smyrnoff, I am the first and I am the last. I died, but now I'm alive. Listen to what I say. I know how much you suffer and how poor you are, but you are rich. I also know the cruel things being said about you by people who claim to be God's people, but they are really not. They are a group that belongs to Satan. Don't, verse 10, don't worry about what you will suffer. The devil will throw some of you into jail and you will be tested and made to suffer for 10 days. But if you are faithful until you die, I will reward you with glorious life. Well, this, we know that Smirnoff is very faithful, committed remnant to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Belonging to the devil, the Kenites. Verse 7 of Revelation 3, this is what you must write to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, and we just previously looked at Revelation chapter 2, now we're looking at Revelation chapter uh, 3, sorry, in verse 7. I am the one who is holy and true, I have the keys that be long to David. And when I open a door, no one can close it. And when I close a door, no one can open it. Listen to what I say. Well, who is this? Jesus Christ, obviously. Only one that has that power, that authority to do so. Verse 8, I know everything you have done, and I have placed before you an open door that no one can close. You were... Not very strong, but you obeyed my message and did not deny that you are my followers. Now you will see what I will do with these people who, who belong to Satan's group. They claim to be God's people, but they are liars. And I will make them come and kneel down at your feet, and then they will know that I love you. Uh, more formal equivalent translations. Uh, the call say the synagogue of Satan. And who are 
the Kenites, descendants of Cain, who's the first murderer and liar. It was Cain. And Cain was a son of the devil when Eve had sex with Satan and was wholly seduced, as it says in Corinthians. Uh, so anyways, back to Matthew. And it's also important to note that Jesus Christ was teaching as well the reprobate of Judah, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, even the Gentile, and even maybe descendants of the lost house of Israel, who were uh, after their captivity and scattering were reclassified as Gentiles in the New Testament time. Because God said he'd make them as like the Gentiles, and that's exactly what he did. And these people didn't know who they are for a while. Some of them. But there's always a remnant. And some important to note, it said, let's look at Luke uh, 4, 7. Luke 4, 7. Just worship me and you can have it all. Jesus answered the scriptures. Is that right? 4, 7. Oh, I wrote down the wrong verse. But just earlier, Jesus Christ said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the king is here. The kingdom of God... The second dispensation of empire of Israel, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Is nine is almost there. He has arrived, everyone, and he is sh showing forth, and that his kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. The second dispensation of the empire of Israel. The establishment of the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, sitting on the throne of David, beginning his mediatorial reign. And that's what he was, and Jesus Christ was communicating this to the elect. Of Israel, elect of Judah, Israel, and the Gentiles, and the elect of the, uh, and the very elect, the preachers and teachers, apostles and prophets, preachers and teachers. And the reprobate was in the audience as well. And this was as well a call 
for God's elect to repent of their sins and turn back to the covenant grace that God made with them to redirect Judah back to Old Testament back to the the biblically grounded Christianity and confronting the apostate of the house of Judah Kenites uh, who were the Pharisees and Sadducees theology which later were sort of the roots the roots go back further than that of modern day Judaism in its various forms an apostate from the original message of the prophets apostles and Jesus Christ, the ultimate prophet, king, and priest. Back to biblically grounded biblically grounded message that the prophets and apostles and the preachers uh, the apostles I should say the prophets and apostles and Jesus Christ was bringing that Jesus brought back to biblically grounded Christianity that it was based on the Messiah who was, so to speak, bringing a post-millennialist kingdom, not a pre-millennial kingdom. And Jesus Christ was proclaiming to the people proclaiming to the people a post-millennialist kingdom, not a pre-millennial kingdom, so to speak. He was proclaiming, hey, I am king. Priest and prophet that fulfills, fills the seat of prophet King, priest, mediator, redeemer, savior, justifier. The kingdom of God. That the types and shadows have come, uh, the fulfillment of the types and shadows have come which Jesus Christ fulfills because Jesus Christ fulfills the types and shadows of the Old Testament and proclaiming his kingdom which would be a spiritual kingdom reigning spiritually in our hearts and minds which is internally but will become visible through obviously the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God the world slowly and gradually being Christianized us then a golden age peace and prosperity then the conquering king defeats the last enemy death who is the devil triumphing the church with and Christ their general 
their king. That it's not going to be a mediatorial or it's not going to be a causatory type of kingdom like what it was in the Old Testament because Christ, it says later in Matthew, Christ fulfills the law, the ceremonial law, moral, civil, and ceremonial law, the moral, uh, fulfills the law, the ceremonial law, but the moral and civil law still remains. And he's proclaiming this new type of kingdom, which of course has always been his intention from the beginning, which will obviously manifest itself visibly in the world slowly and gradually. But, uh, so, <clears throat> so, it clearly Jesus says to his disciples gathering around him, and he taught them, verse 3, God blesses those people who depend only on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. Who, this is referring to those who completely surrender to the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ completely and let him do the driving so to speak the guiding the governance his guiding providence which will bless you richly not only sometimes in this lifetime but the In the third world age and heaven age, God will reward each and one of us for the good works we did for in Christ. Uh, the works we do are not efficacious for salvation. Because we're not saved by works. But we're called unto do good works. And God will reward and bless us with rewards at the great white throne judgment, which will determine the uh, different blessings and responsibilities in the eternal state. So the works we do are showing the very fabric of the robes that we will wear. And some people will be naked as a jay bird. I wanted to say naked naked is a, a cuckoo bird. I guess that could work. <laughs> Verse four God blesses those people who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those people who are humble. The earth will belong to them. Well, God blesses those, obviously, who take serious how sin is a snid or a stench to God's nose
God blesses those who have a, a humility, a, a heart of humility, receptible to God as their Lord and Savior. God blesses those people who want to obey Him more than to eat or drink. They will be given what they want. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will be treated with mercy. God blesses those people whose hearts are pure. They will see Him. God blesses those people who make peace. They will be called the children. God blesses those people who are treated badly for doing right. They belong to the kingdom of heaven you God blesses you when people insult you mistreat you and tell all kinds of evil lies about you because of me be happy and excited you will have a great reward in heaven people did these same things to the prophet who lived long ago. So, the Beatitudes is basically an attitude of temperance that people who belong to the empire of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven that God's it's basically an attitude of temperance in our lives for, uh, to those who belong to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, Christ's empire and kingdom, and eternal indeed, an attitude of temperance in our walk with the Lord in our daily lives. Attitude and temperance how we conduct business, our duties to God and man. What is the definition of temperance? Well, the definition of temperance This, I'm going to give you a definition, and this definition is out of the Webster New International Dictionary, English, English Language, 1918, because I just love the word it uses for temperance, the definition of temperance. Definition. Habitationally, habitational moderation in indulgence of the appetites and passions. Moderation as in eating and drinking in any pleasure, moderation, or sometimes narrowly absent 
from the use of intoxication. The second definition is moderation of passions and self-control, calmness. He calms his wrath with godly temperance. Three, temperance, moderation, temperance. Four, act of tempering or mingling combination. Com combination. Now, modern day definition of temperance is just restraint, self-restraint in the face of temptation or desire, which is good. But we just see the changing of definitions over the over the years as the secular humanist philosophy influences our attitudes, our thinking, and so forth. But I think that the previous definite definition fits is the T. It fits to the T of what Jesus Christ is talking about. The B attitudes is referring to a life of temperance. Attitude of temperance. In behavior, how you act, and all that kind of stuff. And to take that temperance even further than what the secular humanists do. And God wanted to make it very clear to his elect and very elect that no human power or control without God can even come close, can't even be achieved without uh, without the Lord Jesus Christ in your lives and you cannot earn And that it is almost virtually impossible. No, in fact, it's impossible. Let me put it that way. For man to even come close to the kind of temperance that God wants in people's daily lives. He wants temperance in how people behave, act, and stuff that goes further than the temperance that the sacred humanists can practice. You cannot do it. You cannot be made holy. Or earn your salvation by the deeds of temperance. It's impossible without God. It is only through Christ's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, or in rule can we even that can empower us to temperance. But even then we can't even come close to the kind of temperance that God wants in our lives. And when we fall short of that 
temperance, we, uh, we need to repent of it and ask God to forgive us and to empower us to achieve that kind of temperance. But that's the kind of temperance that God wants in his kingdom, his new type of kingdom, which is basically the type of kingdom that God had in mind from the beginning of God's unfolding plan of redemption to redeem God's elect and very elect from the Old and New Testament. Because obviously, no one's perfect. So we cannot even come close to the kind of temperance that God wants from us. Not only does it, He want temperance in our attitudes and all that kind of stuff, but He also wants that to manifest itself in action and he wants you to be perfect like that all the time well obviously you can't do that you cannot be saved by keeping the law or earn your way to heaven by keeping the law you won't even come close but Jesus Christ fulfilled that type of temperance. It is impossible to be fall because we fall short of the glory of God. And it requires the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. To put in practice the kind of temperance that God wants in our lives, attitudes, and in our deeds. But obviously we're always going to fall short of that. And that's why there's repentance. But the Beatitudes are not talking about earning uh, talking about uh, earning your salvation or being just uh, or being justified by keeping the law. He's talking about that that we cannot do it. Because that requires perfection and we don't, are not perfect because we're wicked, despicable sinners. And just to fall short of just one of these beatitudes merits damnation. But thank be God. Christ made, or God made Christ to be a sin, or to be a sin, be a sin who knew no sin, or that Christ, oh, Christ made or God made Christ who knew no sin to, to be, to, oh, I can't remember that verse offhand. Righteousness of God. I'll have to check that again. The brain's glitching out a little bit here. You know the verse. I'll remember it here in a second. So it's talking about that, but it's also talking about rewards that we do for Christ in the body for Christ. Our works are not efficacious for salvation. 
We're saved by grace, justified by faith alone in Christ Jesus, saved unto works, not meritorious works, and those works are not efficacious for salvation. But we are called unto good works, to do good works, but those works have to do have nothing to do with our salvation, but to be rewarded for to be rewarded. And rewarded different responsibilities because, as I said before, we are sewing the very fabric of the robes that we will wear in the third world age and heaven age. And some of us will be naked as a jaybird. And of course, that word bless, make happy means various things. One thing is for certain, reward it. And he'll reward you, not only in this lifetime, but the lifetime to come. He's not talking about us giving up all our worldly goods and be communists and socialists and all that kind of stuff. No. He's referring to an attitude that he wants us to exercise in our walk with him. Our appetites and all that kind of stuff. And thanks be to God, it is Christ. Our uh, conversion, repentance, and salvation unto life through the factual calling of God changes our attitudes and all that kind of stuff. Refocuses our mind, focuses our mind on the attitude of temperance. Living a life of temperance in all you have, uh, 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 all you do, and how you live. Because he just did, because actions. God wants more than outward appearance. He wants that attitude of temperance to live our life in temperance. That's the kind of empire that Christ has established that is individual but also slowly and gradually manifesting itself visual not only in your daily life your action your duties towards God and man but this will be the attitude and thinking of the whole world when the Christianization of the whole world ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity is achieved and then eventually that will be consummated for all for all eternity because Christ defeats the last enemy death who is the devil triumphs over them and consummates consummates it and the last remnant you might say of reprobation is eliminated 
Some will be resurrected to everlasting destruction, some to everlasting life, and we will see various rewards. And responsibilities for the good deeds we did in the body of Christ. Nothing to do with our salvation. Someone will, some people will be those who will barely escape the fires, it says in, uh, obviously, the epistles of the Apostle Paul. And it's uh, it refers to temperance, living a life of temperance. in your daily lives through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, through studying the word of God, through intercessory, through sublimation, partaking of the benefits of the second dispensation of the covenant of grace, wants our attitude to be like that, our duties towards God and man, an attitude of temperance. Upside down in part, so to speak. But, the good news, so a guy wants to see. And, you're thinking, tired, added appetites, and so forth. Good news is, dear brothers and sisters, through. news is God's elect manifest these types uh, their attitude of temperance and how they behave and so forth in their lives God's universal plan attitude sanctifying, regenerating work of the Holy Spirit slowly and gradually those attitudes are changed day it'll be defeated for all eternity God's very elect and elect will and God only on him. God's elect grieves for their sins when it's necessary and repents of it. And God's elect finds comfort and solace once there's a confession to God and confession to one another or Then God, God's elect will be God's elect's hearts will be pure. Uh, 
gods and wreck with trying to God's elect will stand on God's side when fighting the good God's side no matter what the cost is comes So this is a kind of uh, attitude that God's elect, the very elect, will manifest slowly and gradually the sanctifying, regenerating work spirit attitudes thinking how we behave be an attitude of temperance, a philosophy and well and analyze these attitudes all the time. When Christ returns devil and the Everlasting life, some everlasting destruction. Age in heaven age, which will codify Canaanite God's elect and generation. So, Luke chapter 6. Verse 17. Verse 17. And it reads, Jesus and his, dis and his apostles went down from the mountain and came to some flat level ground and many other disciples were there to meet him. A large crowd of people from all over Judea, Jerusalem, and the coastal cities of Tyra, a Tyrene, Tyrene, and Sidon were there too. So, anyways, just in verse 12 through 16. God electing his very elect disciples are now becoming his apostles and of course the elect and very elect and obviously Judas Iscariot who had a said faith rather than a real faith and he appeared to be a godly and holy person, but internally, well, so, I don't know, there's scholarly debate on this, I believe, I think the passage of scripture communicate that, that, uh, this was, this was, this event that took place here was after Jesus Christ teaching on this, uh, after Jesus Christ's Sermon on the Mount. And then, you know, obviously this passage could have been much 
many days afterwards or wherever. But Christ gives a synopsis of the Sermon on the Mount to his apostles and obviously those people that surrounded him. God's uh, surrounded him, house of Judah, Gentiles, and you know maybe even possibly some of the house descendants of the house of Israel. So, anyways, six seventeen, and he's a down from the mountain, some uh, many other disciples were there to meet others. Large crowds, people were all Jewish the cities of I don't uh, were there to say things. These people had come to listen to Jesus and be healed of the death. And all who were troubled by evil spirits were also healed. Everyone was trying to touch Jesus because powers, power was going out from healing them. Ah, uh, Luke 6.20 Looked at his disciples that God will bless our kingdom belongs to you. God bless you. You will have plenty to eat. Bless you. If you're crying, you will laugh. So read a synopsis Of the Sermon on the Mount, the attitude, the synopsis, speaking to his disciples, apostles, the descendants of Judah, Gentiles, and so forth. That the scripture is an emphasis on temperance. Oh, oh, our Jesus Christ will to Jesus because are the marks. Generation attitude, secular humanist attitude, temperance. Verse 22, God will bless you when others hate you and won't have anything to do with you. God will bless you with, assault you, say cruel things about you, all because of the Son of Man. Long ago, your own people did these same things often, so when these things happen, happy, jump for joy. You will have great reward in heaven. Well, obviously, uh, there's a couple of hints in there to the execution and 
judgment that falls on Jerusalem in 70 A.D., destruction of the temple and the scattering of the house of Jews. God's very elect will suffer persecution, and especially the disciples, the apostles will suffer serious persecution. And so will God's elect. Are for uh, are in for trouble. You have already had uh, you well-fed people trouble. You will go hungry, you people. You who are laughing now trouble are going to cry and weep. Sleep. Reprobate, obviously, is going to suffer this serious, suffer this someday at the resurrection and the white throne judgment. Take a hell. This is the coming judgment that falls upon Jerusalem in 78 struck temple. Jerusalem says, look out. And he's referring to the record, babe. But he was lost, who was hurt and turned to God. But they're going to suffer a humiliating blow. And when the world is Christianized, often in a golden age of peace and prosperity, and when the Christian God is worshipped upon an international scale, the reprobate obviously will going to suffer the consequences as well. There's going to be sm smaller than no a day. The life to come, obviously, when they suffer the ultimate judgment. That's uh, when the Non-elect and non-very elect are cast in the lake of fire and the elect and very elect are rewarded and go into the new heaven and earth, the final earth age and heaven age, obviously, the eternal state is an end. Verse 26, you are in, says good things about you. Lies. Oh, you don't have to worry about it. There is no God. I don't need to pay attention to this stuff. Well, friend. We'll see about that. And this thing also goes for the black because God's gonna punish Christian discipline us. We start acting like the sacred human like the sake of humanism. Looking like the sake of humanism. But 
bring us to our knees in repentance and, you know, because when we fall, when we mess up like that, we, we just say, God, forgive us and you'll forgive us and then power us and then make sure you just don't do it the next time. Obviously, was written to the audiences for us. Written obviously the Gospels and the Epistles written to and very direct and reprobate and written to them for us applies to our daily lives that we need to put in practice which God will empower us to do because sanctifying regenerating work of the Holy Spirit God will change and transform our hearts and change our attitudes our attitudes for instance duty towards God and man just and fair partial God suggesting here how a gentleman how a lady should behave how God's aristocracy how God's aristocrat should behave how God's empire should behave how This is what I say to all who will listen. Love your enemies and do good to everyone who hates you. Ask God to bless anyone who curses you and pray for everyone who is cruel to you. If someone slaps you on, uh, uh, on one cheek, don't stop that person from slapping you on the other cheek. Is that a problem there, Jim? Because Michael led me to believe that you had experience with cartels. No, I do. I just don't have any experience. I don't have any guys. I don't have any guys. All right, then. Let's do this. In other words, God wants us to go. There's a lot to bury a lot. To go the extra mile. To go out of our way to help people. To be just and fair on how we go with them. Give them the appropriate chances to do the best that has given them to be cleansed from Alex Russell. Then a man on his board. You will tell them that you were skimming agency funds. Your boss found out. You shot him. Our boss. Being that dead guy. Yes. Might seem like a bit much, but without that dead body, Montero's not going to buy your story. Verse 31. Oh, he's a gunshot victim. Treat others just as you want to be treated. If you love... Only someone who loves you. Will God praise you for it? He went to go down and then you stumbled across an op that he was running against the cartels. We scare Montero into moving his ship at some place we can bust him. All right, listen to me carefully. You gotta have each other's back. Just once you're in the mood, you sign ways. You pull out. You get it. Are kind to people who are kind to them. The reprobate, the non-elect. 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 There's a range and of three miles, Michael. Michael, elect. please don't break it. The reprobate. Red tape is brutal at the if agency these days. I'm going to ruin my life. Out of the way. 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 Out
just and treat people right. People made in the image of God, they're just like God, that human person. Obviously, he died for the elect. He did. He endured horrific for the people. That he said he found out. Soon he returned to the duty for the money. And God, in life. And God selected and boy elect me. Change the house and so forth. And go on that extra mile to help people out, to reach people, whatever it should be, to the treating God's elect. God's elect there. We will be able to do it. And we will be rewarded in blood. I don't have a life plan. I looked at Make you happy and content. So, uh, this is the children. Is it me or does uh, someone have a secret admirer? Don't judge others, and God won't judge you. Don't so be hard on others. When God will be hard on you. Forgive others and God will forgive you. If you give to others, you will be given a full amount in return. It will be passed down, taking together, spilling over into your laps. The way you treat others is the way you will be treated. So obviously, God's elect and say that elect don't have a right to judge whether someone saved or not. That's God's business. So don't do it. Stay away from me. But we are able, but we're allowed to judge our preachers and teachers. God's people by their actions. What's your actions? But not whether they're saved or not. Oh, and go the extra mile if you try to make amendments in those areas that you can. 
and God's elect and they elect. And of course you'd be blessed. Zach signed me right the task force. You could do it now in this lifetime, but the lifetime to come. That piece of shit. Here's my have a knack for it. Knack for it. Verse 39, he was also used some saying as he spoke to the people and said, Can one blind person lead another blind person? Won't they go fall into a ditch? The fact of the matter is, we have a, uh, it's absolutely absurd and ridiculous. Blind leading the blind. You see that everywhere. The sacredest human people and they okay, blind. Like a Let's get this done. And if we continue to follow to make an enemy. the regular schedule means your enemies know where you are every the hour of the day. Humans, While crowded living conditions mean they can the time and place that is best for an attack. The Usually, the best thing you can do is stay moving, stay aware. Not only this lifetime, by retribution, but the lifetime of death. Uh, I mean, it's never pick up on you, and you're actually going to win Man, I've been seeing this kind of idea. Uh, won't they? Okay. Such a it's verse 40. Yeah, it's not even like the rest of the summer. Yeah, it's better than the teachers, but when they are fully trained, they will be like their teachers. So before you're around, everybody, you have to go bust his chops. I mean, you're not going to get lunch. Verse 41, you can see this in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the log in your own eye. How can you say, my friend, let me take the speck out of your eyes when you don't see the log in your own eye? You show off, first get the log out of your own eye, then you can see how to take the speck out of your own friend's eye. Well, we see in, uh, what are you talking about? Verse 39, one blind person made another blind person, we got a question mark. Rhetorical question, but also deserves an answer, and that answer is no. And then it goes yeah, on to say, guy, won't they no, both fall into the ditch? The answer is yes, they will. I've never seen it before in my life. That's the best you can do, Agent Kemp. You've never seen me before? Seriously? I'm just going to see what's going on here. He didn't tell me about the bus because he's the one that told the media about the ship. And he's been playing you, no, man. They're not. I swear, Montero, he's lying. Of course he's going to say I'm lying. What's he going to say? I so you out, please. You but they, they will be lying. Okay, well, we're going to have to sort this out because one of you. Well, Jesus Christ being our teacher, to teach you, to train you to be like Jesus Christ. Mike, we don't have a lot of time to get Jesse out of there. You're probably not going to get you in here. Card and I will take the front for on their fire. You go out back, you get Jesse. Wait for my camera. Carol, he's blown. Got to take care of business. Business, you can help other people. And God's elect and very elect will take care of the log in their eyes so they can help deal with the speck. Nobody is coming! Our friends. Go get this book, radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go get this radio. Mike, I'm really gonna try and sell it over here. You might be our only shot to get Jesse out alive. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. 
you can, you can personnel, How do you deal with the log in your eyes? Well, obviously, got a ten of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and commit. Then you help your in training so that you may help your brother with the speck in his eye. Because you're no better than him. We are all by grace. God's elect and very elect constantly deal with respecting their. Smith do on one nine thing. James thing. Sins to one another when you do wrong. Street. God's elect and very elect will do that. So I can deal with that. Uh, those with specks in their life. Friends and foes alike. Because some of you may have friends. Mr. Ape. Whatever. And you guys get along perfectly. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you uh, don't compromise the tree. And make your position clear. at the same time tolerating opposing you. Be in the world but not of the world. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay to make friends with God's elect and and you just who knows that friend the atheist may be one of God's elect that will get converted later on and you may just be that sorry to happen Cannot be achieved by human. Guys, there.
power to be able to achieve spirit and you can't earn your salvation saved by grace just Grace me on your favor. What is faith? Fight. Fight standing. Because God made Christ to send who we look for so we might become the righteousness of God. And take care of business. as an instrument of conversion both and conversion in your life in all aspects of your life a life of temperance out of you by a reproducing disciple follower of Christ becoming more and more And your appetites and so forth being conformed daily to the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit because we've also been sanctified and we're being sanctified and we'll be glorified. What does sanctification mean? Made holy. What does holiness mean? Set apart for God. And and glorification. Rejuvenation. Right. daily through sanctification, your attitudes, so forth, change. made a new creature, you've been made a new creature, you're being made, sure one day you'll be purified. Same old body that went into body will be resurrected, rejuvenated, and glorified for all eternity. Our attitude work of the Holy Ghost Bap daily baptism of uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost being infused with the power to choose stake and repent get back in back back to work Back in the field and and well, it will be produced in the whole world slowly and gradually. As the whole world, our friend, a golden age of peace and prosperity. Well, I'm looking to keep in mind, bear in mind, the God. God expects this every single day. Uh, what's the enemy of the transfer? I don't know, my guard owed me a favor. But we um, know, you can only know what he's doing. Well, I'll just grab and those so and the other guard and maybe look at him. We defend the image of God as the same in the fall. Yeah, there's like one spot left there. Our will is the slave to the devil. I don't see it. And death. And it's the... The conversion and 
fall short of practicing the Beatitudes in our daily lives. Thanks to God Almighty. We don't have to worry, we don't have to salvation or be right standing with God by keeping the law because we God, he made it possible in our will. Devil of death. Devil. And death. And empowered us. Created us and gave us the power to choose and choose other lives. Through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Our attitudes will change, and when we fall short of the glory of God, thanks be to God for the forgiveness of sin, death, burial, and resurrection, and holy plan of redemption. We go before God and confess our sins and get that taken care of, so we can do what God's called us to do. Earn some rewards, and you'll lose some rewards based on your actions, behaviors that you do in the body of Christ. And so, what the good news is, uh, in Matthew's writing, in of the covenant of grace was coming with in in second dispensation of the covenant of grace was going to be established. Someday God glory and praise for that. But unfortunately, God, unfortunately, uh, people during that time, yeah. saints of God and all that, suffered serious persecution. And don't, and don't misunderstand God, prosper and this and that. God's retribution ain't in play because retribution. Part and parcel of how God deals with man. Retribution in our lives through discipline. And there, there needs to be some correction in that area. And you best believe it. Correct that. Correct that. We bring in about some correction in that area. No doubt about it. And through the regenerating sake of time, work of the Holy form daily to the likeness process of sanctifying of the ethos. And the whole triune God. God in essence of nature, three distinct persons who are God, play salvation of God's elect and mankind. Uh, six, uh, forty-six. Why do you keep on saying that I am your Lord? 
refuse to do what I say, comes and listens to me and obeys me is like someone who dug, built a house on solid rock. Floods came and the rivers rushed against that. Built so hey, it's 49, but anyone I say and doesn't obey one whose house was built. Solid rock as soon as the river rushed. That's very interesting. I like that. Yeah. God's elect. Back then, listen to him. God's elect will listen to those who are meant to be converted. One thing will stand, that is, kingdom, empire of the heaven, and kingdom of God and the earth as, as the Kaiser. That's the only empire, the only thing that will stand. Everything else will not stand. Crush the pieces, the little pieces. The systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God. The atheist won't stand. Won't stand. The communist won't stand. Yeah, opposing religion or ideology or philosophy will not stand. The Kenites will not stand. No idea, no philosophy, nothing will stand. Will be crushed to pieces. The concept, the price of the consequences for their sinful actions, eternal damnation, all eternity. But on the other hand, God's elect will hear the word, listen to the word, and go there. Builds their foundation on the sound, solid foundation. Solid foundation, the empire of the God in the earth, Christ Jesus, Isaiah of the heaven, God. Of all eternity, there's it's through Christ Jesus. Everything else will be crushed into and won't be stamped. The systematic preaching and teaching the word of God, the world will slowly die. These are the sadness of time are gonna turn really soon and Christ judges uh the house of Judah, destruction of the temple in seventy eight you know, and the scattering of host uh, scattering of the house of Judah. For their apostasy. 
majesty, beauty, and putting Christ to death, fusing Lord and Savior, knowing that He's Lord and Savior at the same time, but still refuse accept, repent, accept and repent of their sins, accept them as Lord and Savior, and do as God. Accept the fact that Christ brought a post-millennial kingdom, not a premillennial kingdom. Christ didn't bring a premillennial post-trib rapture philosophy. That's an apostasy that was pro uh, propagated in the late 19th century and still plagues us today. That won't stand. That will be correct. Doesn't honor God. Your duties towards God and man will be crushed in your life. You'll be reformed, transformed, changed, rehabilitated. Slow, gradual process. Sanctifying the work of the Holy Spirit. You've been sanctified. And someday you will be glorified. Some will be resurrected to everlasting life, some to everlasting destruction and damnation. So, accept Christ as the Lord and Savior. But at the same time, every knee shall bow down and confess Him as Lord and Savior, whether you're saved or not. Unsaved, the reprobate will confess Him as Lord and Savior and be cast in the Lake of fire, hell for all eternity. The elect, the elect will confess him as and go to be with the Lord for all eternity. New shiny robes that you will wear in the final earth age and heaven age, the third age and heaven age. The, the Works that that your works so very essence and aspect of the robes that you shall wear and bless given different responsibilities and so forth and then there'll be no more sickness and no more suffering and no more pain and then you will truly be blessed by like that when the world is Christianized as I said the wealth of wicked is being transferred righteous those people, those pockets of insurrection that still has not accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, golden age of peace, still adhere hypocritically being a Christian. And the Christian God will be worshipped on an international scale. And God's moral and civil law will be the law of the world. I It makes sense, but I prefer uh, the more formal from the original language to the Jews. Uh, Plaster, a nail photo, and your day of spark. Oh, then you can. Find your Okay, I'm going to take my afternoon tea at four. What's your point? Why do you need me? Do you really think you're in a position of
Um, so, they're at least uh, inclusive to one another. Are in conflict and oppose each other. Obviously, we can't do this. We have no power because we we can't do this because we have no power. We when the fire where the fall happened, the image of God was totally defamed. Came totally. Uh, Deprived and morally deprived, and we can only do what our flesh dictates. So there's the modern-day certain bill. And so obviously, Do attitude satisfactory to affection. God wants them to recognize their need for a Savior, that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, and that they need Him. Without Him, God stands. They will fall because they perfection of God totally and totally pray that image the thing when the fall happened we were all created in the image of God we're finite and God is infinite and when that fall happened the image of God that we are created was the thing, although parts of it remain. And those light and the light of grace and the light of conscience obviously eventually shines through those cracks, which then brings about the transformation. This is Christ wanted to realize their imperfection, holiness of God. Their need for a Lord, a Lord and Savior. Without Him, they can do nothing, and that they need Jesus, Lord and Savior. And through His death, resurrection, resurrection, ascension, and rule. David brings about the cars us do so. Choose to choose otherwise. Elect have free will choice to choose to choose otherwise. Their their our will is enslaved. We're free from that, and we can choose to choose otherwise. The very elect, not so they will right, free will. As fast as I can. But the principle still applies. Uh -huh. Down. So, God writing, uh, obviously, Jesus speaks. Elect and the very elect, and uh, the reprobate. Communicating this to them. And a warning, warning of the great white moon just warning of How's it coming? the coming judgment to fall the AD instruction more. The new coming. Uh, 
fucking It's a great God or his still waiting to find out, but Sheree oh, isn't right. showing any symptoms. Mr. Nemore, we just got the rest I'm assuming you not that virus is good. God made with the elect and the old testament that God made with the elect and the new testament and the elect to come and as God commissioned his church to go out and get and bring his elect to him back to him to the eternal kingdom the Cutting the grace of God made with them. The Bible is one of my things. Who are waiting for us? They were trying to kill me. An extra blanket. You know, blessings and benefits attached to it, uh, including the land promises for all, not just for the house of Judah and Israel, but also for the Gentiles. Is the elect and very elect Anglo Saxon Israel, the house of Anglo Saxon Israel, the royal house of Judah, the house of Judah, the multicultural house of Judah, the Jews, and the And how do we exhibit Sharif? Is a life of by participating First we in the benefits, benefits of Christ that he procured us. What is, what benefits has Christ procured by his, um, how do, uh, uh, how do we come to be made partakers of the benefits which Christ hath procured? We are made partakers of the benefits which Christ hath procured by the application of them unto us, which is the work especially of God the Holy Ghost. The seed of Adam, the seed of Abraham, the seed of David, is the ultimate grand elect Jesus Christ. 
king, emperor, I should say, kaiser, high priest, grand uh, priest, grand priest, oh, I should say grand bishop. And prophet, mediator, redeemer, obviously savior, sanctifier, justifier, glorifier, etc. So anyways, let's see those words, hide those words in our hearts and put into practice. The Sermon on the Mount, Matthew places the Sermon on the Mount in the forefront of his story of the Galilean ministry, although it seems to have come some months later at the time of choosing the Twelve, Luke 6, 12-20. If indeed Luke is reporting the same sermon, it must have been that Matthew regarded the Sermon on the Mount as the epoch of Jesus' teachings, of which his whole, whole ministry was an illustration containing, as it does, the very heart of Jesus' teachings. We may think of the Sermon on the Mount as being to the New Testament what the Ten Commandments are to the Old Testament. Every Christian ought to memorize the Sermon on the Mount and strive earnestly to live according to its teachings. The mountain on which the sermon was delivered is not named. Tradition says it, it, it was the horns of Aten. Blessed and happy are the Blessed, happy are the discouraged, the sorrowful, the lowly, the spiritually depressed, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peaceful, and the persecuted, in part the exact opposite of the world's standards. But the blessings is not in the unfortunate condition itself, but in the glorious rewards to come heaven to Jesus who knew was so infinitely superior to earthly life that he regarded anything that increased the longing for heaven a blessing So, uh, what was the word? What was I going to say? It's very important. So, you can say that the empire of Israel, the kingdom of heaven, and God, is a uh, empire of temperance temperance in the aristocracy and aristocrats of the empire of god and his elect it is an empire of temperance it is not recalcitory. It is not temporal. Christ spiritually rules and reigns in our hearts and minds. And it's eternal. And it will manifest itself 
slowly and gradually become visible through the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God, the world will slowly and gradually be Christianized, ushered in golden age of peace and prosperity. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, He'll produce these fruits in our lives, change our appetites and so forth. Bring, making, uh, using the Holy Ghost to bring about rehabilitation in those areas, straightening out your thinking in those areas and turning it around from the temple to the eternal. Ah, someone give God glory and praise in this house tonight. <laughs>